Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is Reverend Nessie coming at you. Um, Micro Manna Conference on the 12th of September, 2012. God has been good, and I thank him for being so good to us, giving us his grace and his mercy in the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have power, and through his blood we have power. And we should all have some sort of testimony about how good God has been to us. Amen. I'm not going to keep anybody long tonight. I'm just going to discuss Psalm 91. If you want to turn to Psalm 91 in your Bibles and um, give you a little information on it, and then I will read Psalm 91. I just feel like reading it tonight for some reason. I feel like somebody out there, somebody else out there (laughs) may need to hear Psalm 91. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for this time that you've given us. I thank you for this line that you've given us to meet and to greet, Lord, to talk to one another and to have this Bible study, Lord. And we've got a lot of uh, prayer requests recently, and I want to give those prayer requests to you, Lord God. I want to deliver them straight to you from my voice to your hand. And you've been such a good father. You've been such a good God, Jesus. You've been such a good savior. There's no other person in this world like you. There's no uh, nobody else in this world that would do what you did for us. And God, I thank you for loving us. I thank you for the love that you show us. And I thank you for the way that you use us and teach us how to be how you burn out the dross in us and teach us how to love one another. And you said in the end times, love will wax cold. And we're beginning to see this, Lord God, and what we need to hold on to more than anything right now is love. You are love. God is love. And we thank you for that, Lord. Lord God, for all those that are incarcerated and those that are sick and need healed, we pray for those people, for the ones that are praying, Lord God, and they feel like their prayers are just hitting the ceiling and not going any further. We pray for them as well. We stand in the gap for them, Lord God, and we lift up their prayers to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Um, I'm going to give you a little information about the book of Psalms. Just to, when, when I do the Bible studies, I like to give out a little bit of information um, as much as I can. And don't think it's coming from me because I'm not that knowledgeable. <laughs> I'm just, I just like to give it out from what I read in my, in my Bible, what I've studied up on and everything. I just, when, when I find out, I like to give it to other people so that we all know together. Amen. In the book of Psalms, uh, 150 spiritual songs and poems used by the church in all ages in worship and devotional exercises. It was used as the hymn book of the second temple. Temple, And I think we all remember the second temple when it was rebuilt. Amen. And they use psalms, just like we use a song book today. They use psalms uh, the same way that we do, uh, the same way we use song books. And some people, whenever they turn, tell you to turn to it, some people even say songs, turn to songs, you know, songs. Um, and if the predominant themes are prayer and praise, but the Psalms cover a great variety of religious experiences. They're quoted more frequently in the New Testament than any other book except Isaiah. They're often called the Psalms of David because he was the author of a large number of them. Now, as far as the authorship, <laughs> the authorship varies. The authorship is many of uncertain. Uh, the, the authorship of many of them are uncertain. It is probable that in some cases the name affixed to certain psalms may refer to the collector rather than the author. The following is a conjectural list of authors taken from the various versions of the scriptures attributed to David. There are 73. Uh, to the sons of Korah, there are 11. To Asaph, there's 12. To Heman, 1. To Ethan, 1. To Solomon, 2. To Moses, 1. To Haggai 1, to Zechariah 1, to Hezekiah, uh, a number of doubtful. They're not sure how many Hezekiah could have possibly written. Um, to Ezra 1, and the remainder are anonymous. Um, and the Psalms are there for you to use. And if you look, a lot of people in their Bibles, I, I don't know if you have it or not, check your Bible and see, but underneath the heading, it tells what the psalm can be used for. And, you know, so many people are so used to saying, oh, it's such a beautiful book. It's, it's more than just a beautiful book. 
it's 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 for us to use. And I chose Psalm ninety one. Um, psalm ninety one is a psalm that you would want to uh, recite or read whenever you need. It's a safety. It's a place of safety. It's a prayer that people pray um, to remind them that God has a hiding place for them. Whenever you're overcome, whenever you don't feel good or something's going on in your life that you just feel like you can't handle, uh, it's best to run to the Lord first. He is our divine refuge. Amen. He's our fortress, and he will deliver you from the fowler. And I will begin to read Psalm 91 now. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, which shows us we will not be around them when they go through their reward. Jesus is our reward. God keeps you from noisome pestilence, and he covers you with his feathers. I like in verse 4, he covers you with, with feathers under his wings, shall you trust. He's your shield. When you're behind the shield, nothing can get you. The arrows that fly by day cannot get you. Amen. Verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. That's telling us how the saints are exalted and how we have spiritual knowledge in Jesus Christ. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. That's showing longevity. So we learned in Psalm 91 that when you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, who is God, God is the highest. He is the God of all gods, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords. When you dwell under him, God will take care of you. I'm sure you heard that song a long time ago that says, God will take care of you, and he will. We have to trust him. Notice verse 2, it says, and, and he's my refuge, refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. It, it, you know, the Bible says some trust in chariots and some in horses, but I will remember the name of the Lord, our God. Don't trust in chariots, don't trust in horses, don't trust in anything but the, the Lord God Almighty. Amen. And whatever you need, he'll send it to you. He can use people to help you. You know, uh, and sometimes when, you know, there's a lot of people praying for wisdom, you know, <clears throat> and you can pray for wisdom, and but then when God sends somebody into your life to help you and you reject that help, you could be rejecting him. So we have to be very, very careful um, when we pray, keep your eyes open for the answer. Some people, God sends them the answer, and they reject God. Amen. So trust God. Talk to him first, and he will deliver you from every snare. The devil's busy, folks. You know, the time is short, and he, know, he knows his time. is. He knows his time is short. 
and he knows what's going to happen to him. He knows that <clears throat> the people that believed in Jesus, the people who believed in God, put all their trust in God, he knows that we are going to a beautiful place, and he's not. He, we are getting a second chance. G- with Jesus, we got a second chance. Jesus gave us a second chance, and Satan knows that he doesn't have a second chance. So therefore, he's going to try to take you out in every way that he can. I say it over and over, communication, watch out with your communication, and that's not just telephones and TVs, that's also with uh, loved ones. You know, watch out with your relationships, watch out your transportation, everything. He's working on everything. You know, we didn't know that we were going to have such an evil reminder of 911 uh, the other day either. When they bombed the uh, ambassador's building in Libya, see, things can happen overnight as you sleep. Things can happen that you least expect. God will take care of you. He says, do not be afraid. Whenever these comes up, what, verse 7. Now, I'll start with verse 6, and you heard me read, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness. See, the devil's always busy. Don't be afraid, he says. Oh, verse 5, he says, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Folks, I hate to say this, but it's getting ready to get really, really deep. Many, many things are happening. There's things happening right now that you don't see on the news. You know, you've got to be very careful because some things that you see on TV is only placed there, carefully, strategically placed to capture your attention so that you can't really see exactly what's going on behind the curtain. There are really, really um, strong, heavy, dangerous things happening in the world right now. Pestilence, earthquakes, you know, there's many things going on. What we need to do is turn to God. Turn to God, not man. Turn to God and listen to that still, small voice Amen. He will call your name and talk to you if you allow him in your heart. You have to allow God in your heart. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. There's many, many people waiting to be lifted up and they will not humble themselves in the sight of the Lord. And that's why it's not happening. We have so many people that want higher positions. We have people who want, you know, more of this and more of that and and a good this and a pretty that and a bigger this, you know. And meanwhile, they're not humbling themselves in the sight of the Lord. You know, God is not a genie, but he is a comforter. He loves us. He wants us to do it his way, not ours. And and just as the arrows are flying by day, which also means the arrows that Satan throws to our you know, to our minds make us think certain ways. And have you ever had a thought come to you and you don't know where that thing came from or why you thought that? I've had it happen. I've had really strange thoughts come to my mind that, and that I did not create. And and I actually had to put my my mind put myself in check. And I bound it. You bind it in Jesus' name and send it to dry places never to return. And to send his brothers with him because Satan has no power over you. We keep hearing these words over and over. Did you ever wonder why you keep hearing the same word over and over and over? It seems like nothing happens. Everybody, you hear the preacher saying, the power is within you. God did this and God will do that for you. And you can do this and you can do that. And the reason why a lot of people cannot catch on and, and, they, and they don't know what to do is because they, re, they, they, they left out the fact that they have to humble themselves. God resists the, pr- the proud, the proud. God resists pride. And there are so many people who are proud. Think of the people who are proud because they go to church. You know, I, I, I hate to say it. I get online and I hear people saying things like, yeah, praise the Lord. I went I went to church. I did this. I did that. I, 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 me, me, me. You know, okay, you're letting everybody know that you went to church. Okay, so you got a church. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You got to remember there's some that don't. 
So let's not brag about the fact that we went to church and what we did at the church. Brag about how many people got saved and who all you led to the Lord. Amen. So I will end by saying, if you want long life, if you want longevity, as it says in verse 16, it says, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. If you want longevity, if you want to live eternally, you have to have the priority of prayer in your life and pray to God, amen, and stay under his wings. Don't come out for anything. Stay with the Lord. You know, there's some people, like, I, you know, me and my daughter discussed before years ago about how some people just like the shiny things, you know. There's so many people that uh, they're like a cat. You dangle a toy or something, a little ball in front of a cat, and the cat jumps for it, you know. And there's people that are like that. They have that cat flexibility, you know. The devil dangles silver and gold in their face. And and they they jump for it and then they they don't realize that they just turned their back on God to catch that silver or gold ball, you know. So we have to be very careful of that don't jump for anything unless the Lord hands it to you by His own hand. Then it's no good for you. Reverend Essie signing off. Glad you came today. God bless you. And until next week, to God be the glory for the things He has done. Amen. <laughs>